Do you know what my favorite thing to do is? My favorite thing to do is to take AI and give it access to all of the documents and all the APIs that have all of my sensitive information. Just kidding, I don't like to do that at all. And the reason for this is the potential underlying issues that may arise if that single point of failure has vulnerabilities. Today we're talking about N8N, which is, if you're not aware, a workflow automation tool that uses AI to basically take anything that you may ever want to do ever and write some kind of way of automating it. Now, let me be very clear, okay? I think automation is great. I think taking computers and allowing them to do things automatically for you is like the whole point of technology, but with every access you give an automation platform comes risks associated with there being vulnerabilities. And unfortunately for N8N, uh, the automation platform in today's video, there are three. You will notice both of them, or all three of them, are 9.9s or higher. Not a great place to be. So we're gonna go in this video, we wanna walk through each of the vulnerabilities and talk about exactly what is going on here. So the first one here is uh, 2025-68613, an improper control of dynamically managed code resources could allow an authenticated attacker to achieve RCE. So this one is the first bug we're going into where basically an authenticated attacker could abuse behavior to execute arbitrary code with the privileges of the N8M process. Successful exploitation may lead to full compromise of the affected instance, including unauthorized access to sensitive data, workflows, et cetera. Okay, so I wanna highlight here, all of these bugs are authenticated attacks that give you privileges within the context of the N8N process. Now, if you are running this singly, you are the only person using this, you are one user with one set of boundaries, right? Then that may not be a big issue, right? It may not be a big problem for these bugs to exist, but if you are hosting this in potentially a cloud environment or you are at your house or your job or you have multiple people at different risk levels or different um, accesses, this is a huge issue, right? An attacker could use this vulnerability to pop the N8N process and then using the privileges of that process, read the credentials, read the accesses, the files, et cetera, of other people that are on that node using it. So the way this works is an authenticated attacker can create a malicious workflow, right? So a workflow naturally is not malicious. A workflow is just literally this process here where you have you know, node A touching node B via some kind of logic in the middle. But this malicious workflow is really interesting. By passing in these nodes that have parameters, you'll notice that we pass in this payload expression with these kind of template injection uh, markers here. If we go to this payload expression, this comes from the malicious workflow function, where we can actually go and see in this exploit what a malicious workflow actually looks like. And if you look at this piece of code here, you'll, you'll kind of maybe have like a, a distant uh, whispering of a memory, right? Uh, this constructor, constructor pattern. This is kind of the same pattern as the React flight protocol vulnerability from last year, where basically if we don't sanitize our access to constructors, we're able to take ourselves, our constructor object, and then its constructor object function, right? And then use that to return, at this level, it's the function constructor. So we can return a new function where the function's data is to return require child process, which is how in node you get access to the uh, child process object, and then run the exec sync function, which literally is like the os.system or popen or like run arbitrary commands uh, function in, in JavaScript, and then use that to run arbitrary commands, right? So by creating a malicious workflow and injecting this piece of JavaScript, we're able to arbitrarily run commands in the context of N8N, so not great. And when we can't stop bugs like this from happening, one thing we can do is protect ourselves online by using today's sponsor, Material Security. Material Security is a cloud office security platform that protects companies using Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. It's no secret that phishing is the easiest way into a network, but today's tools stop at the perimeter and don't give you the visibility that you need to see what's going on in your environment. Material stops phishing attacks automatically responding, but with the visibility across your entire workspace, it does so much more. Material provides detection and response capabilities across the emails, accounts, and files that make up your cloud office. From risky file sharing to configuration drift to the potential blast radius of a compromised account, Material allows you to scale up your security posture without having to scale up your team. If email and cloud office security is important to you, which it should be, give Material a try. Guys, the best way to help my channel out is to interact with the sponsors. Go try Material right now with the link below. Hey Material, thanks again for sponsoring this video. Back to the video. So obviously this bug, not awesome, right? It's been patched in, in these versions here. They did show like a, a Shodan scan or like a census scan of like all the vulnerable publicly exposed N8Ns. I don't know why you would ever expose your N8Ns to the internet, just like, you know, other things you wouldn't expose on the internet. 
Uh, but also, this is an authenticated attack, so unless there's like default credentials or like a way for you to get into the system, you can't just exploit this. The threat model here is more about like, you host an N8N model amongst your work or maybe amongst colleagues where there are different levels of trust. And so someone within that group could exploit this and get access to other people's credentials, right? So that's kind of the first bug. Bug number two. Okay, so 68668 uh, is called Natescape. I think, that, and I don't know if it's supposed to be Natescape or Natescape. I don't like the spelling, but it's a sandbox bypass vulnerability that could allow an authenticated user with permission to create or modify workflows to execute arbitrary commands on the host system. So you're gonna probably kind of see a pattern here, right? The underlying issue here, guys, is that this is a system where its entire purpose is to run some kind of automation, right, which is code, and then doing this in a way and properly sandboxing it is like not easy. I wanna make that very clear. Like on the, on the part of N8N, like this is a hard problem to solve, which is why I just inherently don't trust a product like this. It's, it's very hard to get right. Now, you'll notice they use the word a sandbox bypass vulnerability. Uh, the word bypass is doing a lot of lifting here. So a sandbox bypass exists in the Python code node that uses PyIodide, right? PyIodide is basically a runner for Python that allows you to run Python in the context of like a WASM environment or a JavaScript environment. Basically it takes the native Python runtime and moves it to a different runtime. So in theory, there's like less access to the system. Uh, but the problem here is that it's a blacklist system and not a whitelist system. Now, what, if you don't know what that means, a whitelist system is basically, you are only allowed to do the things that are on the list. It is an allow list, right? That is much safer from a sandboxing perspective than a blacklist. Let me show you why. An oldie but a goodie. Uh, so this over here is the blacklist, right? No bicycle riding, rollerblading, roller skating, skateboarding, scooter riding, ah! You didn't say no unicycles, right? From a sandboxing environment, it's always easier to express what you are allowed to do than to express what you are not allowed to do because hackers will find an edge that you did not consider. Now, the problem here with what I'm saying is that this really didn't, uh, I don't think it blocked anything. I found someone who did a bit of a write up here. I can't tell if it's AI, I can't tell if it's slop. But from what I'm reading here, basically it seems like in this Python jail, PyIodide, you're still able to do like, subprocess check output, which is literally like how you just run system commands natively in Python. Like this would be like the number one thing you'd want to sandbox. And then so I was reading this article and then apparently they patched this in the latest version of, of N8N, which was like a one, 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 one. Basically they make the Python native runner uh, an environment variable you have to enable. So it's not enabled by default, but there is another issue that came up, I think literally yesterday where PyIodide has an internal like, you know, runtime object that inside of it has a function called eval code where you then can just use that eval code to evaluate Python code that is not subject to the sandbox and can then run other code on the system. So like you have a sandbox, very hard to do, very hard to configure properly, but it just seems like there were a lot of, I guess, um, misses here where, you know, they, they didn't really consider what could go wrong with the sandbox. Maybe they just didn't know how the sandbox is meant to be configured. It just seems like uh, this is not the right choice for the Python sandbox, right? And, and th again, I'm, I'm not like trying to throw shade. Sandboxing an arbitrary run code on me system is really, really difficult. Like for example, Louisville Academy, I have such a hard time with this that I just literally use another service that they take the code and they push it somewhere else, Patrick, because it's just, I don't wanna deal with, oh, you uh, you blocked the exec VE syscall, but you didn't block the exec V MD FD syscall, which allows you to execute a file descriptor, like all of these little edge cases, I don't wanna consider it, so I'm gonna push it somewhere else. Not an ad, by the way, I just, I literally do use them. So it's important, I think, to, to highlight that. Bug number three, finally, uh, 2026 21877, an unrestricted upload of a file with a dangerous type vulnerability could allow an authenticated attacker to execute untrusted code via the N8N service, leading to a full compromise of the instance. Again, same kind of privilege model. There is a, a attacker that has credentials and they are able to upload a file that is able to run code in the context of N8N, potentially compromising the access of other users, right? Now doing a little more deep diving, uh, this is the rapid seven write-up of this. You'll see it's an arbitrary file write in the git node. So again, when you say nodes, you're talking about like the individual little pieces here that are doing some kind of action. They're taking a decision, they're running code, they're doing it, they're doing something. The git node is likely a node in a workflow that allows you to clone things. 
I have not been able to find a POC for this. But what I'm going to assume is that the Git node is able to clone repositories. You're able to set up a workflow that arbitrarily downloads a Git repository and either through a failure to bound uh, where the Git repository is cloned to, or there's like some kind of directory traversal issue in the way that it actually clones the repo, you're able to overwrite files in the context of the N8N process, which could allow you to control the process and break out of some kind of the jail, right? Of, to, to run code as a N8N, right? It's not a great place to be. Again, I couldn't find a POC for this. Just from reading like RCE via arbitrary write in a Git node, to me, it just smells like, you know, you control the destination of a Git repo, right? So, so not great. Or it could be um, commit CI stuff, right? Maybe there's like a, a way for you to automate the execution of a Git push or a Git pull, and then like the commit hooks execute some code. So not a great place to be, guys. Again, I want to highlight here, guys, in, in this video, I'm really not trying to like shit on any sort of product. I really never try to do that unless it's like egregious, right? I want to highlight that like this system, this thing they're trying to do here, where they are trying to automate the execution of arbitrary anything is extremely hard to do, right? And I think this is an AI platform. So I want to highlight they're probably also using AI to code this system. I want to highlight here that I've had some changes in thought in AI generated code, right? I think AI code gen is okay for the most part. The problem that I have with AI code gen is that it's not able to see the totality of systems. It's only able to see like the system itself. So where those edges kind of touch and the contracts between systems is where a human in loop still needs to be. And it may just be that there is oversight in this, right? I don't imagine the N8M team is very large. And so like building this system where like nodes can do anything and having to manage all of those contracts between nodes is really, really difficult. And then even inside of the nodes, right? Within the Git node, within the Python node, like managing the, the sandboxing of every single one of those is like a very difficult task. Uh, would Rust have fixed this? No, Rust not have fixed this, guys. This is, a, this is an issue more about like control of access to file systems or control in how the process is running, what user level it's running at, stuff like that. It, it's not as simple as just like put it in Rust. Rust, again, would solve memory safety issues. None of these are memory safety. None of these are race conditions. These are all literally like you are able to put a file somewhere or ingest a JavaScript string in a way that you are not supposed to. That causes the RCE, right? So. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Uh, hit that sub button if you're new here and then go check out this other video, which you may like just as much. We'll see you over there. Take care. Goodbye.